Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll make a Scotch pine. Let's see if we can mimic some characteristic features of this very special tree. Like the bended trunks with their distinctive colors, or the wetted foot of the tree with roots in every direction. I'll take you through my process step by step. So, let's go! Let's start by looking at the wire armature. I've prepared three of them, which I will combine into one tree. I'll cut the loops at the bottom. If I twist them together, they form the root system of the tree. Here you see what I mean. I've twisted together bundles of two to four strands of wire, each one forming a root. The one in the middle, pointing straight down, is the pin with which we will attach the tree to the layout. Also note that I have strapped the three armatures together with a wire that goes round the bottom. Now I've placed the wire armature on a piece of foam which I can later dig into the layout. I can now start cutting loops and forming the tree into the final shape. Now that I'm happy with the basic form of the tree, I can start applying modeling paste to give the tree its final shape. As I wasn't quite happy with the thickness of the trunks, I decided to spray the whole tree with scenic cement and sprinkle over some sawdust. This gives the tree a lot more volume and really adds thickness to the trunks. Note that I tried to really get the shape of a real Scots pine. Their trunks and branches have quite extreme bends in it and I tried to mimic that as good as possible. You see me coating the tree here. I mixed together a paste of modeling paste, raw umber and some sawdust. This paste is thick and firm enough to correct and model the trunks and branches where I want to. Raw umber is always a good base coat I think. Well, for natural things that is. You see that I use a rough brush here. This makes the texture of the bark rough and ribbed. Just as I want it. The next step is to apply tufts of twigs as a base for the pine needles. For this I use this product. You can buy it at any do-it-yourself store. I'm using tiny patches of it and work in very small sections at a time. I apply a little bit of glue on the branches, take a small patch of cotton and put it on the branches. Now it is very helpful if the branches are bended in such a way that they form sort of an outstretched hand on which the patches can lay. This is easier in the drying process as the wool doesn't fall off. From here on it's a simple process of glue and repeat, glue and repeat. And as this is a bit boring, I present you the final result. So this snowy tree is going to be the base for some paint. I'm looking for this warm, almost orange color that real Scots pine trees have. So I mix a rust color with yellow and after spray painting it I touch up the trunks and branches to get the desired effect. Now on the lower half of the trunk most Scots pines have a more brown grayish bark. So by painting over the tree in a brownish, grayish, greenish color I try to replicate that. This is a tedious, time-consuming process, but hey, I'm spending time on my hobby, which is better than being at the office. So before we go any further, there's some pruning we have to do. I'm just cutting away some excess hairs here to make sure that the tree has the shape that I want. So let the greenery begin. In this box I've mixed together a mixture of Woodland Scenics Fine Turf and Woodland Scenics 2mm Static Grass in a 50-50 percentage. 
So I apply this with a very small spoon and I try very hard not to hit the trunks with any green because they're also soaked with scenic cement. Now, at first I try to reach the hardest to reach parts and then I move my way out and upward. You see that the tree is coming together nicely, but after I was finished, I did it the second time just to cover the branches really well. After all the green is applied on the tree, I touch up the trunk some more. I'm using pastels for this, and I'm especially using a skin tone, a dark umber, and some green to touch up the trunk real nice and to give it that really realistic matte finish. For the final step, I touch up the base a little. Some moss, some dead needles, some color. Just to make it look nice and also to make it blend into the final layout. There we are. I hope this video was entertaining or useful to you. If so, please like and subscribe and see you again next time.